Hello friends, it's me, Shin, and today I'm coming to you from the Fontaine Blue where we're checking out La Fontaine? La Fontaine? La Fountain? Uh, we're, we're checking out their premier brunch spot. Happy to have you along with me. Let's head inside. All right, my friends, and here we are seated at La Fontaine. I asked my server, and that's the official pronunciation of the restaurant name, so we're gonna go with that. And it is absolutely stunning in here. Incredibly bright, ultra high ceilings with the super chic white leather. A very beautiful restaurant, great brunch vibes here. Now, while the restaurant might be really pretty, you know for me it's all about the flavors. So let's see what they're offering here, starting with the drink menu. And here is the beverage menu in La Fontaine. We have cocktails on the left here. Looks like they're running about $19. All looking really good. And then we have zero proof and beer down here. Looks like the beers are ranging from about nine to, uh, yeah, about nine, $10 with a single outlier at 21. Over here we have wine by the glass. And uh, down here we have wine by the bottle. Feel free to take a pause in the video if you'd like to take a closer look for your favorite drinks. Next page, wine by the bottle as well. And continuing down that list. Here's the other side. We got a pretty decent wine list here for a brunch spot. Looking really good. And that's the beverage menu here at La Fontaine. Let's go and see what they've got to eat next. And here is your menu at La Fontaine. Taking a peek inside, we have your beginnings up top. I, oh boy, I'm not going to be able to pronounce any of this. Uh, la Orange Tonique. Uh, la Vin Rose. I'm, yeah, it looks like, looks like juices here. Breakfast. Oh, okay, I can pronounce this. Overnight oats, granola and yogurt. Yeah, looking really good here. You have omelets, benedicts, as well as your egg dishes. Yeah, looking really nice. Taking a look at the interior of the menu here, we have appetizers. Uh, deviled eggs, crudos, a buckwheat crepe, all looks really good. Salads and sandwiches here. Yeah, oh, a croque monsieur, that looks really good as well. And then here are some items that looks like they're for the table. A tart flambe, that sounds interesting. And then we're gonna have the entrees here. Looks like uh, a lot of great seafood options, like scallops. Uh, we have a cheeseburger, steak frites and a, oh, an oyster mushroom ravioli. That sounds really good. And then here are your sides. Wilted spinach with crispy garlic sounds pretty good. Chicken apple sausage. Yeah, there is your brunch menu at La Fontaine. That's a pretty good looking brunch menu there. A lot of interesting options I'm looking forward to trying out. And you know how it goes in my videos, every restaurant's a buffet if you're willing to pay. So I'm gonna get a nice variety and together we'll see what this restaurant's all about. Don't go anywhere, I think I'm gonna start off with a cocktail. Be right back. All right, everyone, now our cocktails just got here and these are looking really good, let me give you a view. Now I got the concubine, which is a whispering angel rosé with lemon, Japanese sakura blossoms, as well as boba pearls. And my friend got the moonstruck, that comes with Bombay sapphire gin, rose water, pomegranate, lime, watermelon radish, and star anise. Those of you who watch the channel for a while know that I'm not a huge drinker, but when it comes to brunch, I like to go in on at least one drink. So here we go, cheers to us, and cheers to you. Thanks for being in the video with us. Oh yeah, that's really nice. The rosé is super smooth. Light and crisp flavor there. It's very enjoyable. Nice amount of citrus and acid coming from the lemon. And I will say the sakura cherry blossoms have an interesting flavor, much sweeter than I was expecting. A very nice cocktail here. All right, my friends, now those were some great cocktails, but it is time for some food and our appetizers are here. These are looking really great. Let me give you a view. We got their deviled eggs today, as well as the buckwheat crepe. I had to try the tart flambe, as well as the duo de salmon. These are all looking really good. I'm excited to give them a try. First from the appetizers, I want to try the buckwheat crepe. Let's give it a shot. Oh, that's very good. A beautiful cook on that buckwheat crepe. Such a nice soft texture there. The flavor of the ham here is probably some of the best I've had in a very long time. Very salty with a nice smoky aftertaste. The cheese included is very rich, and the bite rounds out with a very nice floral note coming from the pesto. Creamy, salty richness also 
comes from the bechamel sauce here, and all of it comes together very well. I'm a big fan of this crepe dish. And we'll try the accompanying salad. Nice, beautiful sheen to this, as well as some vibrant colors. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, that's fine. A very basic arugula salad here, topped with a pretty decent quality olive oil, I would say. Tiny bit of tang coming from the pickled onions, but mostly you get the nice peppery flavors of the arugula. It's a pretty good compliment to this buckwheat crepe. All right, next up, we're going in on the deviled egg. Beautiful presentation on the deviled egg here, and a wonderful orange color with some bacon bits on top. Looks really good, let's give it a taste. Oh yeah, that's excellent. The creamy yolk portion of this deviled egg is absolute perfection. Velvety in texture, it's so smooth. A nice amount of paprika provides a smoky flavor, and there is also a hint of heat coming from what I want to say is horseradish. The bacon provides a nice salty hit, and you get a little bit of bite coming from those chives. I absolutely adore these. These are really great deviled eggs. Next up, we're gonna try the tart flambe. Now the tart flambe does have an optional topping, that being a $30 edition of shaved truffles. Originally I opted for without, but they really wanted me to try, so they offered me a complimentary shaving on two of the slices. I guess some of the perks of being a YouTuber, right? Let's go and try the ones without the truffle first. Really looking forward to this one. Oh yeah, that's delicious. Super crispy flatbread here. I absolutely love the texture. It's thin and light while still providing a nice crunch. It makes for an excellent starting point in the bite. You initially get the nice sweetness of those caramelized onions, as well as the saltiness of the bacon. A nice rich hit comes from the Gruyere cheese, and then the bite rounds out with a very pungent flavor coming from the creme fraiche. Very pungent in a way that a blue cheese would be, although I wouldn't say quite that strong. It's salty, rich, and pungent. I actually really like this appetizer. Now I definitely give my thanks to La Fontaine for providing me a little bit of this truffle on the side. I say a little bit, they actually shaved on quite a bit. Let's see how it tastes with the additional truffle. Yes, that's very, very good. The additional truffle here actually comes at the very front of the bite, which was surprising. A nice earthy flavor sets the stage for the rest of that tart. It definitely does enhance the flavor. I do like it a lot, but the base product is fine on its own. Even without the $30 additional truffle shavings, I think you're gonna really enjoy this one. All right, everyone, and the last appetizer to try today is the Duo de Samon. This is effectively salmon two ways, served alongside really thin, crispy bagel chips. I'm gonna be trying the raw salmon first. However, the bagel chips are pretty thin and they're not structurally sound, so I wouldn't load them up too heavily. My bagel chip definitely broke on itself. But I have all the elements on this portion. Let's give it a try. Oh yes, that's very good. The salmon has such an unbelievably deep flavor. It's been aged properly. There's a really nice deep briny flavor here. The bagel chips are mostly there for texture. I can't say I taste it much in the bite, but it is super light and airy, and the crisp it provides for the breakup is quite welcome. The creme fraiche provides a nice rich hit here, giving you an overall satisfying mouthfeel. There's just a little bit of dill and onion providing some bite and freshness. Altogether though, this comes together very nicely. I'm a fan of the dish. And the last bite to try from this round of appetizers is gonna be the smoked salmon. Let's give it a try. Yeah, that's pretty good. A nice mild flavored salmon here. They did an excellent job on the cook. It has a nice firm texture, really providing a good dichotomy with the bagel chips. The overall flavor profile is definitely smoky, although I wouldn't say ultra smoky. It's a slightly woodsy, very appealing smoky flavor. I will say though, between the two, I'm definitely much more of a fan of the raw. All right, everyone, and that's all the appetizers we're gonna be trying today. My friend and I are gonna continue working on this and then we're gonna go on another round of food. Don't go anywhere, breakfast items are coming up next. All right, everyone, now our first round of entrees are here and we went with a lot of breakfast items and this is looking really good, let me give you a view. We got the pancake souffle as well as the Spanish omelet and we also got an order of their traditional Eggs Benedict. Now La Fontaine is being very hospitable and offering to put a little bit of that truffle on one of the Eggs Benedict as well, providing some more variety for today's presentation. This is all looking really good, let's give it a taste. First up, we're gonna be trying the Eggs Benedict. This is the non-truffled version. Looks really good, let's give it a taste. Hmm. 
You know, that's pretty good. The texture of the English muffin, if this is an English muffin, is very nice. Actually, much more biscuit-like in quality, a little more dense than airy, but it does provide a nice rich base for this Eggs Benedict. The egg has been poached beautifully, a nice runny yolk, and well-cooked whites. A nice high-quality salty ham here, although I would say much less smoky than what I had before. I think the flavor of the hollandaise sauce is a little mild. It doesn't come through on the bite all that much. I'm not sure if that's because I've had so many really eggy hollandaise sauces in the past, but I suppose my one critique would be I would like that to be amped up just a little bit more. I'm gonna try the truffle version next. Again, a lot of appreciation going out to La Fontaine letting me try the truffles, giving you all at home much more variety for me to try. And I hope this is really good. Let's go in. Okay, that's delicious. While on the tart flambe, you had so many nice, bold, salty flavors compete with that truffle. The much lighter flavors here on the Benedict allow the truffle to really linger on the palate. It provides a nice earthy note throughout the entire bite, really elevating this to another dimension. I'm not sure if it's $30 for shaved truffle on this dish as well, but this one might warrant it. It's pretty damn good. Alrighty, and let's go in on the accompanying hash browns. It felt super crispy when I was cutting into it with my fork. Let's give it a shot. Okay, that's delicious. A wonderful cook on these potatoes. The crisp is divine, and the center portions of the potatoes are so soft. This might be some of the most beautifully seasoned potatoes I've had in my life, really letting you appreciate the flavors of the potato while still providing a really good robust flavor. You really get the bite from the chives here, which is nice and welcome, and the creme fraiche provides a rich hit that's really delicious here. I really adore these hash browns, they're really good. Okie doke, and lastly, we're gonna be going in on the pancake souffle. Served alongside some lemon curd, berries, and whipped cream, all of which sound really good, but I wanna try the pancake on its own first. Here we go. Hmm. You know what, not bad. These are very dense. I was expecting much more of a fluffy, airy pancake with the name pancake souffle. It's very cakey in the center and texture. Speaking of cake, I think the flavor is very akin to a yellow birthday cake. It kind of has that distinct yellow cake flavor. It's certainly not bad, but it's not really as elevated as some of the other dishes I've had today. Now I'm gonna try the pancake souffle with the whipped cream provided. Certainly has a nice look to it. Let's give it a taste. Hmm. You know, that's very interesting. Not what I was expecting at all. That whipped cream has a lot of time in it. It actually transforms the overall flavor profile into something a little more akin to a savory bite. I don't hate it. I don't know if I enjoy it thoroughly though. All right, everyone, now I think you and I both know what berries taste like, so I'm gonna try the other topping, which is the lemon curd. Let's give it a try. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. A nice bright lemon flavor in that curd. The acidic freshness is really welcome here. Nice and rich as well, providing a little bit of additional moisture to the bite. I like it, I think that would be my topping of choice with the pancake souffle. All right, everyone, and we're gonna go in on the Spanish omelet next. A beautiful looking omelet here. Strips of crispy potatoes on top. This looks great. Oh yeah, that's amazing. The eggs are very fluffy. Such a wonderful cook. The timing is absolutely spot on. The crispy potatoes provide a very nice crunch in the middle of the bite. The chorizo definitely has a mild spicy savoriness to it and is definitely the salty element in the dish. The roasted peppers here are an absolute gem. They've been able to extract the perfect natural sweetness out of these peppers, really balancing the overall flavor profile. It's salty, it's rich, slightly spicy with some nice sweet elements. This is really fantastic. I love their Spanish omelet. All right, everybody, now that does it for our breakfast items today. My friend and I are gonna continue working on this and then we're gonna see you for another round of entrees. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. All right, everyone, now our next round of food is here and for our second round, we decided to go with all the handhelds. We got the croque monsieur as well as the everything croissant and the main lobster roll. This is all looking really good. I can't wait to give it a try. Alrighty, first up, I'm going in on this monstrous lobster roll. This has to be one of the best looking lobster rolls I've seen in a long time, but looks can certainly be deceiving. It's all about the taste, am I right? Let's go in. Oh yeah, that's really good. 
The sweetness of the lobster here is incredible. Very high quality, really fresh, and deliciously seasoned. You get the pure sweetness of the lobster while also getting a little bit of smokiness coming from some paprika and other seasonings. And just the lightest application of mayonnaise or something providing some richness. This is just some of the most perfect lobster I've had in a lobster roll. I love the addition of avocado here providing an additional creaminess to the bite. It all comes together very well. The bread is a bit dense here. There's certainly a lot of bread, but it's been beautifully toasted with a very airy center. I'm a fan, I really like the lobster roll. Now the lobster roll is also served alongside some kind of green crema. Got a little bit applied here. Let's see what this tastes like. Mm. You know what, not bad. It's a very robust pesto aioli with a lot of richness and some pretty bright flavors. I actually don't think the lobster roll needs it at all. It does overpower a bit throughout the bite. If you're looking for some additional richness in your lobster roll, it's certainly welcome. But personally, I don't need it applied. The lobster roll is just really good on its own. And next up, we're trying the croque monsieur. Now, croque monsieur is basically a French ham and cheese sandwich with a cheese crust. And I've definitely had a lot of great croque monsieurs in my life. Let's see how the one here is at La Fontaine. Hmm. You know, I'll tell you, that was just okay. The quality of the ingredients here is actually really nice. I love the ham here. It's still that nice smoky ham that's been in a lot of previous dishes. And the Swiss cheese is certainly providing a nice flavor here as well. The milk bread here is marvelous. It has a beautiful sweet bread flavor while not being too dense. My biggest issue here is that unfortunately some of these toasty bits on the corner are definitely overdone. There's definitely a bit of a burnt flavor going throughout the entire bite. If we didn't have these burnt edges, I think this would be quite good. All right, my friends, and the last bite to try from the handhelds is the everything croissant. Obviously a play on an everything bagel. And I don't know if you can really eat this as a sandwich. It's pretty thick. I don't know if I can get my mouth around the whole thing, but I think we'll try it in halves. Now the first half of this looks like an everything croissant with something that looks like a cream cheese. I'm gonna try this bite first. No, that's pretty interesting. It doesn't really have the flaky texture of a croissant, although it is well toasted. It's a much more nutty everything seasoning, leading to a very earthy flavor. What I thought was cream cheese is actually more of a ricotta, providing a nice salty richness to the bite. Not exactly what I was expecting, but it's pretty good. Now the other half of the everything croissant is this section with all the smoked salmon. And I mean, this is pretty massive. Let's see how this tastes. Yeah, that's pretty good. The quality of the smoked salmon here is top notch, that we already know. Solid briny flavor there with a firm texture. Now the creamy layer underneath the salmon is actually not the same ricotta, but something more of like a horseradish cream. There's definitely a little bit of bite coming from that, and it's also providing some richness as well. A nice sweetness coming from these onions. In general, it's pretty good, although I think this is probably one of the more middle of the road offerings. It's not all that unique. All right, everyone, and that's all for this round of entrees. Pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and continue working on this, but we're definitely starting to get pretty full, so we're gonna box up a lot of it. One more round of entrees are coming up. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. All right, everyone, and our last round of entrees are here, and this is looking so good. Let me give you a view. We got an order of their scallops as well as the chicken, and we had to go in on their cheeseburger my song. This is all looking really good. Let's give it a try. First up, we're going in on the diver scallops. Let's give it a try. Oh yeah, those scallops are terrific. Beautifully plump, nice and firm. They absolutely nailed the cook. Nice crispy sear on the outside, giving some texture and a very clean briny flavor. There's a very delicious caviar beurre blanc sauce down here that's providing an additional briny element. I actually don't have any serious complaints. These are some very well prepared scallops. All right, everyone, next up is the poulet paillard. I hope I said that right. It's the chicken dish and it does look very, very good. Really looking forward to this one. This dish is really, really good. Perfectly grilled chicken, super moist, but you still get that smoky flavor from the grill. It's been wonderfully seasoned, a really nicely balanced chicken here. These cooked capers are absolutely phenomenal. 
A slightly nutty, savory, and floral hit coming from those. It's actually my favorite element of the dish. You get a nice pepperiness from the arugula here, and a little bit of tartness from the balsamic that really helps cut through the rest of the flavors. A nice amount of bright acid coming from the lemon here, and a very natural sweetness coming from the tomatoes if you get that in the bite. I'm genuinely in love. I actually adore this chicken dish. All right, my friends, and the last entree we're gonna be trying today is their cheeseburger maison. This is looking really good. Let's give it a try. Yes, that is a very tasty burger. A really wonderful bun here. Soft to the touch, buttery and rich, although well toasted in the center, holding its integrity for the shape of the burger. The burger meat is such a beautiful blend. It's really rich and fatty, providing a nice beefy flavor, and they absolutely nailed the cook with that medium. They opted for a simple lettuce blend here, which is working very well, really letting that quality beef do the talking. There's a very tangy burger sauce applied here, akin to a Thousand Island, but much more robust. It's very bold in flavor, a little more savory than your standard Thousand Island. This is delicious. I really like the cheeseburger here. All right, everyone, and the last bite to try from our entree round is gonna be these potato crisps. Super thin shoestring potatoes here, and they feel super crispy in my hands. Let's give it a try. Yes, very tasty. Beautifully crispy, very light and airy. They're so thin that you can almost see through them. They're quite translucent. They've been well seasoned and they have a beautiful rosemary flavor. It's a very nice accompaniment to the burger. I have no complaints on that one. All right, everyone, now that does it for all of our food here today at La Fontaine. My friend and I are, are so stuffed. I think we're gonna box this all up to go and then we're gonna go in on some dessert next. Don't go anywhere because sweets are coming up. Welcome back everyone. Now we have all of our food boxed up and ready to go because it's time to end the meal with some sweets. Let's take a look at the dessert menu. Now here's your dessert menu at La Fontaine. I still can't pronounce most of these, so I'm just gonna leave it to you to figure out what they are. But my friend and I are ready to end this meal with a little bit of a treat. So for you all at home, I'm gonna make whatever dessert we order up here right now. And here it is everyone, our dessert, the Mille Fuel Manite. I hope I said that right. This looks like a puff pastry with a vanilla cream topped with some kind of a caramel sauce. And it is absolutely beautiful. Does it taste as good? Let's find out. Now they did pour a caramel sauce on top as they presented it to us. This is looking really good. Let's give it a taste. Mm. Oh yeah, that's very tasty. The puff pastry here has a beautiful texture, wonderfully crispy, while still remaining buttery and flaky. Definitely a little bit of a nutty flavor coming from it as well. It's a great base for the dessert. The vanilla cream here is divine. Rich and creamy, but it's not overly sweet. It has a super velvety texture and a bit of a nuttier sweetness really letting you know they must have used the vanilla bean. The caramel sauce here is working very well, acting as the most sweet element on the dish. This is a really wonderful dessert. I like it a lot. All right, everyone, now that does it for our brunch here at La Fontaine at the Fontainebleau. Our brunch came out to $434 today before tip, and we certainly enjoyed our meal. I really enjoyed the tart flambe as our appetizer today. The Spanish omelet ranked very highly for me today, and both the chicken and the scallops were incredible as well. I think the only real miss we experienced today was the overcooked edges on the croque monsieur, but otherwise the kitchen here at La Fontaine is doing a phenomenal job. I want to give a big shout out to our waiter, Devin. His service was exceptional today. We were never left wanting with anything throughout the entire experience. If you're looking for an elevated brunch experience here at the Fontainebleau, La Fontaine is definitely the space you should be hitting. All right, everyone, now I hope you enjoyed this Saturday video from here on the Las Vegas Strip. Coming Tuesday, we're gonna be checking out another local joint. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you on Tuesday. Bye.